Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time zone you're in, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Well, it's Tuesday, so it's got to be tremendous. I pray that God is blessing you today. I pray that the Lord is speaking to you. I pray that the Lord is giving you new hope for this day in which we live in. And I just bless you in the name of the Lord. I, hello, Alex, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you, Danette. God bless you. Uh, we want to pray for a friend of mine, uh, Terry, uh, his uncle, uh, has the virus. He's 90 years old. Father, I bring up this uncle today, Father. I ask you, Lord, for a miracle for the staff in the nursing home there in Kansas. I pray that the Spirit of God would come in there and minister in a very special and wonderful, powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you, Christian. God bless you, Junior. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that you're all uh, uh, passing this way today, and we just pray that the Holy Spirit will, will touch us. Now, one of the things that we've been talking about, this is honor, and uh, we need to realize that so many Christians do not honor God honor his word and do not honor each other and so one of the things i want to just uh, repeat is that we honor those that are above us we honor our peers and we honor those that we are ministering to it begins to be just a beautiful circle a beautiful cycle of honoring one another and so i want to just uh uh, as, as you read in uh, Luke chapter 13, 35, I want to read the last part. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. When God comes and brings a minister or another Christian into your life and you honor that person, you're going to see Jesus through that life. You're going to see Jesus through that ministry. So blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Let me just share some notes that I wrote down today. When we treat people with high esteem, we glorify Jesus and he comes and he blesses us as individuals, as families, as churches, as city and nations. One of the things that I recognized when I was pastoring, I could tell the heartbeat of the family by the children. If the children respected me and honored me, that means that I was talked about at the house in a very positive way. But when the children disrespected me, I knew that the parents usually spoke negative about me in their home. And so the children thought, well, I don't have to you know, respect Reverend Hofer. My parents don't. They talk negative about him all the time. I don't have to either. I'll tell you a secret. Your children will tell the temperature of your house spiritually. Not all the time, but many times. And so we need to learn to honor. When I travel in some countries, they will not allow me to carry my briefcase. Now, at first, I'm thinking, I am strong enough to carry my luggage. I don't need you to help me. But once again, I felt the prompting in my spirit to back off, German. God wants to do something. And so I allowed them to carry my briefcase. And they were showing honor. It's in those churches that have given the minister the gift that God has sent to them, honor, is where God really moved. Now, in white churches, it is rare for anybody to take my briefcase. Now, it isn't that I, you know, well, you know, no, no, that's not it at all. There's something about honoring each other that God jumps on like white on rice. He jumps on it. 
We're going to have to learn to honor. We do not worship the leader. Only Jesus gets my worship. But I will honor you. And as I honor you, I'm honoring the Lord. As I dishonor you, I am dishonoring the Lord. So it's proper in the kingdom of God to honor one another. In my first church, I was honored. I really was. They honored me, and our church grew. Money came in. God blessed it that we built a beautiful church there for the glory of God, and it's because the people honored me. They saw my faults. Hallelujah. There's a ton of them, but they honored the position. They honored my place of ministry. The second church I went to, I was not honored, and we did not see the church grow as fast as the first one. And sorry to say, the second church is closed. It does not even exist. Okay? And they didn't honor the other pastors that were there at that church. They didn't honor them, and they didn't honor me. And now the church is closed permanently, uh, to my knowledge. When I went to a person to preach, uh, they, when they honored, I, I, I went to the prison in Pennsylvania. Who ever think that prisoners would honor anybody? You know what I'm saying? But these guys who were redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, they honored me because, look, I came all the way from Arizona on my own expense to go there and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. They honored that. They're saying, wow, here's a dude that came all the way from Arizona to preach to us in Pennsylvania. They honored that. And God gave us wonderful meetings. Check this out. The prisoners gave me a recommendation. Wow, never received a recommendation from prisoners in my life. Why did God move? Why? It's good. Listen to this. I gave this man a prophecy. I was scared spitless, okay? I gave this guy a prophecy and I said, the letter that you're waiting for is going to come. He had never heard from his family in 12 years. I gave that word to him in September. When I came back in December, he had received that letter. Why did God move in that place? Is because they honored the man of God. This is the problem I'm seeing in white churches, is that they do not honor the gift that God has given to them. You say, well, there's so many things that's wrong with him. Nah, 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 nah. You're not seeing the picture this morning. You know, there's, there's tons of things wrong with you and with me, but it's covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. You honor. It's the same way with the policeman. You honor that policeman. He might be a, a jerk. He might come up to you strutting up there. Saying, nah, nah, nah. And there they are, policemen like that. I know that. But you honor him or her because she is or he is above you. He is the authority. A couple of months ago, I went through what I call a pink light. I mean, it was, wasn't red and it wasn't yellow. It was in transition. <laughs> and I looked to the right and there was a police person. This old man and she turned on the lights, the sirens and the lights, you know. And, and at first it upset me. Lady, I'm not running from you, you know. Uh, and so when she came, I honored her and I respected her because she was put in that authority. Thanks be unto God. She only gave the old man a warning. Hallelujah. But I think if I would have dishonored her, I think possibly I could have gotten a ticket. But I was upset inside because she put the siren on. What'd you do that for, you know? But in a way, she is an authority. Okay, enough of that. So, uh, when, so when, when, I, when I went to that prison, they honored me. When I went to Mexico and Guadalajara, 
the, the, the Mexican prisons are, are different than the ones in the States. They cooked me a meal. Are you listening? In the Mexican prison, we had pasole. Can you get excited? Hallelujah. And uh, you haven't lived until you had pasole. Oh, Gloria. And so they gave me pasole. I was just, I mean, out of their own resources, they made me a dinner. They honored and ladies and gentlemen, I want to release this message to you today in the name of Jesus. And God touched those prisoners in a powerful way. You want to see a move of God in your church? You want to see God use your pastor? You want to see God uh, have your pastor come alive? Begin to honor him. Honor each other in that church. Yes, not only the pastor, but we honor one another in Jesus' name. Glory to God. I'm, I'm excited about this message, folks. And I've had to repent, even myself, that I need to honor people more. Okay? Now, here's the story of Hannah. It's found in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 13 through 14. Hannah was one of two wives, okay? And this guy, El Elkanah, I can't pronounce it very good, but you can find the story in 1 Samuel chapter 1. This dude had two wives. That's illegal now, okay, for Christian. And he had two wives. One of them was just popping out babies like crazy. Boom, I'm pregnant again. Boom, I'm pregnant again. Hannah was not pregnant. And man, don't you know that maybe... Well, the Bible says that the other wife, you know, said, you know, what are you? You know, you can't even get pregnant. And uh, it, it was, it was, it was nasty. This other lady was nasty to Hannah. So Hannah went and to, uh, uh, went to pray. And when she was praying, she was, you know, just crying out to God, you know, and, and uh, Eli, who was the priest, he accused her of being drunk. And he said to her, you know, woman, you need to lay off the sauce. You've been drinking. She responds to him. He made an accusation to her. And she says, no, my Lord, I am a woman that is, has a sorrowful spirit. Immediately, she said, and she honored his position. Okay. And she called him Lord. And she said, I am a woman. Now, if the pastor would have, in America, would have called one of the women in the church, you have been drinking again, you drunk, you know? Man, this old woman would have got up and said, you're not going to talk to me that way. We're going to leave this church. You know? Well, I've, I've seen that, you know? And so, but she's smart. She's smart. And she says... I wanting to have a child, and that's why I'm praying. Verse 17, the, the Eli, who wasn't much, he says, Go in peace, and may the Lord of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And through that, she became pregnant, and Samuel was born. How many times... Christians have gotten upset about the pastor. I've had people leave my church because I did something wrong. Sometimes I didn't even know that I did something wrong, that they dishonored me and got upset and they left. And you know something? I've not seen too much good come out of that when people leave in a hoof. But this woman, Hannah, was smart. She was offended but she still honored the position of the priest. Later on, Eli's sons messed up, and the Bible says that God said, I'm not even going to forgive them. That's, you can read that for yourself. But I want to say something to you. Even in a time that you are being abused, sort of, taken advantage of, whatever, by somebody that's over you. Do what Hannah did. My Lord, I'm not drunk as you think I am. 
I am praying. I want to have a baby. And Eli finally got with it. And he said, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. Wow. So maybe you've been treated wrong at a church. Maybe a pastor did something. I've been treated wrong at churches. I've been ripped off by people. I have prayed for people. Oh, Brother Holford, pray for me that, that God would bless my business. I have an anointing. I prayed for their business. God bless them. They said, I'm going to send you offerings, Pastor. Oh, praise God. God bless their business. They bought a boat. <laughs> I never heard from them again. I just heard through the grapevine, God really blessed them. So when you come to me and you say, Brother Holford, pray for my business, am I going to go to work and say, I ain't going to do that? The last time I prayed for somebody to get a business, God blessed them, and they didn't do nothing for the kingdom of God. No, 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 I'm not going to do that. Although that person offended me, I'm not going to do it. I am going to honor you with the requests that you have, and I'm going to pray and believe God. Sense in my spirit today that maybe you need to forgive a pastor. I'm really sorry that sometimes as pastors we make mistakes. We make wrong judgments. We said something we should have been quiet. I've been guilty of that. I've had to go to some parishioners and say, please forgive me. What I said to you was wrong. Or what I said to you was right, but it was in the wrong tone. What would happen, my dear friend, if we will keep the perspective of honoring one another? I honor my wife, so I'm not going to talk to her bad. I honor my children, I'm not going to talk to them bad. Doesn't mean I'm not going to discipline them, but I'm going to honor them in the discipline. I have a friend whose name is Pastor M, and he lives in California. I have stayed at his home. I wish that I would have been the husband and the dad that that man is now at my early age. He honors his children. He disciplines them. Uh-huh. He talks to them. <laughs> but he honors them. He honors his wife. I've stayed in their home many, many times, and I've watched this man operate. He's younger than I am. I'm learning from this man. And I'm saying, oh, God, if I ever, no, I don't believe this, but if I ever come back again, I would like to come back as Pastor M in California. He really has taught me some things. And I want you to start honoring even the people that treat you bad. You need to honor them. And as you do that, you are doing it as unto the Lord. You might say, they don't deserve to be honored. That's probably true. And neither do you. I don't deserve being honored. But because of the beautiful circle, okay, if I keep honoring people, it's going to come around and visit me. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do today. If you have been your feelings hurt in church and you got mad and you left because the pastor did something wrong or somebody else did and you left in anger, I'm here to tell you right now, you need to go back to that people and say, I want you to forgive me. I don't know if you'll go back to that church again. I don't know. But for sure, you need to get with that pastor or that person in that church that offended you. They were wrong, but you were wrong the way you left. You might want to go back and say, you know what? I was wrong the way I left. I was wrong in my attitude. I should have honored you. 
and I want you to forgive me. I'm telling you, if you'll do that, heaven's going to come down and bless you. Okay? Father, today I pray for my listeners in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that there will be a revival of honoring one another, even when we're offended, even when the other person was wrong. Eli was wrong. He was out to lunch. He was not in the spirit. He did not know how to handle this woman. And he accused her of being drunk. But she turned around and called him Lord. Wow. And she got the baby. What a story. We love you so much. God loves you. This morning, I went to my garden and I began to sing, you know. I go to the garden alone and somebody needs to go to your garden. It might be your bedroom. It might be your back porch. It might be your car. It might be a park somewheres, a place of solitude and get alone with God because you need some answers. God's going to meet you there. He's going to bless you. Hey, I want to thank you for praying for us. I want to thank you for uh, financially supporting our, my, our ministry. We do appreciate it very much. And we've been praying for you. And we have just been experiencing something fresh and real during this time that I've been home. And I thank God for you. We've been doing three things at our house. We are worshiping the Lord. We're taking communion and we're giving offerings every day. That's right. And, and, and I'm telling you, God is blessing this time. We're about to leave this house and do a great work for God. Amen. Hallelujah. Bye-bye.